Welcome to this guide on how to make a simple capacitive switch or multiple capacitive uh, buttons on switches out of uh, pretty much any Arduino. So this is how uh, how my demo demo setup looks. Uh, this is a uh, very cheap uh, Arduino Nano clone. This this ran me I think 1.7 euros off of eBay. I did buy 10 so. But you should easily get these for less than less than two bucks, less than three bucks, let's say. Um, all right. So basically, the only components related to the uh, capacitive sensing are a piece of aluminum foil. Unfortunately, mine's aluminum backed paper from my chocolate, which uh, does the trick. And uh, some very high value resistors. Don't mind this 18 milliamps. I did measure how much this draws, um, how much current this draws on uh, idle, right? When you're when it's actually listening for the touch input. So this is kind of the consumption you're going to be looking at with uh, with this chip, though the 328P, I believe it is. And um, yeah. And uh, so the way you connect this is uh, there is a library. I'll show you this right in, in a minute. And you define a send pin and a receive pin. And so in this case, um, the receive pin is pin number three, I believe. Yeah. And uh, it is going through uh, some very high value resistors, as I said, I think. Um, so right here I have, I Three times 5.5 .5 kilo ohms, so 16.5. Ah, crap, mega ohms. I'm sorry. So these are each 5.5 .5 mega ohms, and so you're looking at a range between, um, say, one mega ohm and 15 mega ohms. And the the higher the resistance, the more sensitive this uh, this touch button will become, this touch area. And so I have uh, 3 times 5.5 .5 mega ohms here, and um, let me plug this in right quick and I'll show you how it works. Could have prepared this beforehand, but obviously I have not. Could, could aim this your way so I have a better impression. I do note that this is this is this very easily gets uncalibrated. So, for example, if you touch the wrong uh, the wrong pins or whatnot like this, it completely goes nuts. And it, it does the 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 library that we'll be using um, does have some method to to recalibrate every two minutes or something. But if you if you while you're testing, you should reset this as often as possible. All right. So now that it's reset. You see that I am not touching it and it starts detecting. And you can obviously still still touch it and it'll be fine. And the nice thing is that this works under quite quite a depth. So this is a I have no idea how thick this is, but you you saw it and so it should be should be good enough. So we need to reset it again. And again, not touch any parts of the of the entire Arduino. All right, so now let's hook this up to the computer and see the serial monitor and see look at the code. All right, so coming over to the computer, uh, the procedure is just as simple as the wiring. The one thing we will need to do is download a special library that will facilitate the um, facilitate the the using the Arduino as a touch sensor, and uh, that is very easily obtainable. All you need to write is Arduino capacitive sensor. You can even fuck up the writing; it's it's still fine. And um, yeah, here you have two versions. I always like getting the latest version of everything. I have no idea. Before this video, I used to use this one, so I know that one works for sure, but let's just try it. Try the new one out. This will take us to GitHub, uh, click clone or download, and download zip. The point is just get the library. All right, so now to add it to the uh, IDE, you're gonna go to sketch, include library, and add zip library. And there is a 
problem if you have your downloads folder on a different hard drive on a Mac, apparently you can't really get to it for some reason. But what you can do is open your downloads folder from the dock. I do have a, a shortcut in the dock to a different hard drive, doesn't matter. And just drag and drop it over here and this will take you to that location. And um, yeah, just click it. And that should be it. Now we should be having the capacitive sensor library, right? And this does come included with um, this does come included with uh, some um, with a uh, demo test bench. Where the fuck is it? Libraries capacitive sensor. This one. So anyhow, it doesn't seem to be working anyway. The point is. We don't like that shit, we're going to make our own. So what you need to do at first is include the library which we just downloaded. So you do this by writing including capacitive sensor dige. Alright. And the next thing we need to do is globally declare an object of type capacitive sensor. So it's this, this, this library basically initializes a class of objects similar to integer. Right, an integer object you could just put a number in it. It's not an object. Anyway, assuming an integer is an object, right, you, you'd have you'd have int a equals five. Right? Now what we'll, 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 uh, what we will be doing is declaring an object of type capacitive sensor. So capacitive sensor in one word. Capacitive sensor, yeah, I got that right. And uh, let's just call it sensor one is equal to capacitive, and we need to initialize it capacitive sensor. And here we're going to be putting the pins, right? It has two inputs: this um, this uh, constructor for this object, uh, and we're just going to be putting pins. What do I have here? I have pins three and four exactly. So, and, um, yeah, so pins three and four. And so be sure to note this down because you're going to be coming, coming back to this quite a lot. So pin three is the emitter. Pin four is the receiving pin. And what we also might note down is 15 mega ohms, mega ohms. Right, this is the pin, pin 3 is the pin that has the 15 mega ohm resistor uh, tied to it. And um, yeah, I think that concludes the, uh, the first part. And now let's do our setup, void setup. Pin mode to output. This will just um, this will just initialize uh, the LED, right? You did see that I have a, a yellow LED on mine, so this is just the pin that it's connected to the the output of the Arduino that it's connected to the connection of the Arduino because it could be an anyhow. And as I said, we do want to make this one blink a little bit. Too high delay. I don't know forty. Make it a quick blink. All right, and we'll most likely want to look at the um, look at some serial output from this void loop. Let's see now. All right, so it's fine up to here. So I'm not telling you guys shit. And so what what, what this uh, what this library does is allow you to obtain a value of it's not a value of capacitance, it's an arbitrary value that is related to the capacitance felt by the Arduino, right, on the pins and on, from, the, from the little plate. So we're going to be putting this in a long variable, and we're going to be naming it sensor value. And this will be 
the name of our uh, the name of our uh, sensor object, right? Sensor one, sensor one, dot capacitive sensor. So we're using the capacitive sensor method from this object. If you're going to be going into computer science and you'll be doing Java and all that object oriented stuff, you you'll get this. It's incredibly simple. Don't worry about it. If you're not into object-oriented programming, again, you really need not carry. This is all you need to, to write. This is, um, I believe, some kind of timeout value. Uh, this, is, this is the value that comes in the default one. It seems to be working. Uh, I'm not touching it. And uh, so, yeah, let's, um, let's just put this up on the monitor and see what, see what we're getting. Zero print line uh, sensor value. So this will just print out and show us um, show us what the values that we're getting are and so I'm going to be making this a bit smaller and get the actual video on, on shot I'm going to try to make this as cool as possible but no, no promises so let me adjust the, the thing so it fits in the lower pop portion of the screen should do it. Anyhow. Alright, so let's upload this to our sketch now that we have the thing on the screen. Alright. And um, at the moment the LED won't be blinking because we've added nothing to make it blink. But let's just see how um, how the stuff looks like on the serial monitor. So let's fit this nicely onto the screen. And we see we're hovering around 40-ish, 30-ish something. Now watch what happens when I near my hand. Since I don't have much uh, vertical space, I'll be doing it from the right. Maybe, maybe pull this so we get even, even better of a picture. All right, so watch this. So you can clearly see that there is a very, very tight relationship between the distance to the plate and the value that we're reading. And the reason this is happening is that the Arduino is sending a tiny pulse. You can actually connect an LED up to these uh, these pins or this there is uh, the send pin and and ground, and you'll see it blink shortly. And what it does is it sends a short impulse. Right, it brings the brings the pin high for a very short amount of time. Then the electricity obviously flows through the plate and back to the sense pin. And the thing is, the Arduino is, and the, the reason why we need the library is the Arduino is actually counting the program cycles it takes for the electricity to actually receive, to actually get to the other pin. So for, it sends the, the pulse on pin 3 and then waits out to see how long it takes until pin 4 receives that electricity, right? And this is why we need the huge ass resistors. It's just going to ensure that a tiny, 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 tiniest amount of electricity is getting into this, right? And, and then is being passed to the, to, the, to the receive pin. And so when we actually touch this, a very layman's explanation for what is happening is that the electrons, right, obviously will take the sh path of shortest resistance, right? And that is probably from here to here. But some will take paths of more resistance, of high resistance, they'll just be, right, most of them will go via this route, but some will spread around, right, and quantum crap that I'm fully unaware of and fully do not understand. But my understanding is that when you touch this, some of the electrons, right, instead of having just this path to go on, have this a lot more path to go on, a lot more paths to go on, right, and get stored by this. First, they gather up in me and in the plate and in whatever, and then they start flowing on the wire towards the receive pin. 
correct me if I'm wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong, this is how I understood this so far, it's again irrelevant to the, to the tutorial, but nonetheless, so as you can see when we touch it we do get a huge value, right, if we keep our fingers pressed it's 30 grand a lot. And um, yeah, so now let's uh, let's try and make this uh, make this a bit more useful, and add a add some lights. Right, having LEDs blinked ev makes everything work, look so much cooler. So if sensor value is greater or equal to let's say. Uh, 80 digital right to high All right so we're going to turn the turn the LED high else we're going to be turning it off obviously digital right to low and I don't know let's let's include a small delay here All right so let's upload this to our Arduino. And as you can probably see, I did add a tiny capacitor to, to my board, right? It, it does make it a bit more stable when you're using it on power banks, right? So that's why that's there. And so as you can see, No, this this isn't really good. So this is way too sensitive. No, wait. So the the library has some very some very uh, occult tricks. It it does. So if you touch it once, it then becomes less sensitive or a bit more calibrated. I don't know. The point is, it is working. And you can obviously have this toggle on and toggle off and stay on and, or stay on and stay off and so yeah that's how you do it